I have no doubt in my mind that uh, our population in Ethiopia and, and the whole uh, in the region wouldn't want peace. I mean, uh, this is a region that has suffered from lack of it. Um, Ethiopia has gone, you know, lost many years because of that. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it takes a bold uh, decision, vision for the region to get where we are today. Uh, as a diplomat of my country, I mean, there are things which would, you would think it's impossible, like, you know, a normalization mm -hmm. uh, with Eritrea so fast in the short period of time. But it happened. And uh, it, you go beyond that. You elevate it to a, a certain level that those issues that were, you know, mm -hmm. between you and, and your other, other neighbors become irrelevant. If not irrelevant, minor to the benefit that you have in coming together. So for Ethiopia, this normalization is helping, I mean, a lot, not only Ethiopia and Eritrea, but the region as a whole. But our uh, vision is to have the same kind of a relationship with all our neighboring countries. When the Prime Minister make a call to you or a request, or Ethiopia made a request that you should take this position, how did you feel? Well, you know, the first uh, instinct say, would I be able to do it? And I think it's for all of us, this is the first reaction. And second, it's to weigh really the, the, the great honor. And most of all, it's a call. And when the country needs you, you have no excuse to refuse. So I say it at this stage of my career and so on in my life, if there is anything that I can do for my country, this is the time and I'm very much honored to have been chosen for this position. You are not the only woman currently in that country who is occupying a very strategic and an important position in that country, not only in the country, but also on the continent. We have the president of the Supreme Court and other women who were elected in different ministries, very strategic ministries. What a shift in Ethiopia. How did we arrive at this? Indeed, it's a big shift. It's a big change of mindset. It's about taking seriously the women empowerment and gender equality issue. It's an issue that we are carrying from the 20th century, again on the 21st century. This has to end. And uh, we have currently a leadership in Ethiopia who believes that we cannot do it without half of the population, which are women. And as you have rightly noted, we have on the continent, you know, many uh, female ministers, women ministers. But uh, in our case, it's 50% of the cabinet. And as you have rightly noticed, it's the main substantive ministries that they have, they are leading currently. So, uh, and, and the Supreme Court, and I think we have not seen the end of it. Uh, it, it this will definitely emulate others. This will Im inspire other women uh, who would say, well, if they can't do it, then I can also do it, or I can try to do it. But as a woman, we always have to be careful. The fact that when you are in high position, uh, these are political appointments, you have to look at others who have to fill the gap, because in the middle, you, you, you see a vacuum. So it's, it's all very important to look at those, to, to support them, to train them, to mentor, for them to go up the ladder and occupy the place that in any case, um, well, experience has shown that uh, if you give the opportunity, they can do it, and they can perform. So we will try to prove that we are able for the job. Ethiopian President Saleh Wakazwede says her country will work hard to maintain peace in her region. The newly elected uh, president spoke, as you saw there, to our foreign editor, Sophie, uh, Sophie McQuenna. And we will bring you that full interview a little bit later this evening. Zweda also spoke about her new role and says her country has made progress, as you heard, in appointing women, saying it's a huge shift. That interview will be aired tonight at about 10 o'clock on The Globe here on DSTV 404.